Okay, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking uh, some time out of your Friday afternoon to come uh, to our product launch of Defendry's Aerial Platform. We're really, really excited for you guys to see it today. Um, for a couple housekeeping items real quick. Uh, bathrooms are um, up uh, on the door on the right if you go all the way through the church and it's on your on your right if you guys need restrooms um, secondly we want to thank innovative Ali and team if you guys have not spoke to innovative um, they're a you know tier one enterprise uh, DGI dealer and they have been fantastic helping defendry get this launched and, and off the ground so uh, thank you to the innovative guys definitely talk to those uh, to that group um, and then lastly here so we're gonna be streaming this uh, live and so we've got uh, agencies from Florida all the way to California that are online right now. Um, so anybody uh, attending remotely on the live streaming, you can ask questions just by posting comments, um, and then we'll get to those at the end of today's presentation. Um, so first, I'm gonna turn it over to Pat Sullivan. He's gonna say a few words. Um, he's our CEO. Pat. Good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> thank you for being here. The first thing I wanna do is all the officers in the audience and online, we all want to thank you for your service. Your service all, uh, isn't off all the time recognized, but uh, we certainly recognize it. I always say, whenever I do get a ticket, and I've gotten one or two, I always say to the officer, I thank you for your service. Uh, didn't appreciate the ticket, but I thank you for your service. Um, Defendry was formed a couple years ago with the idea, really, to focus on active shooters. Um, I, w I became familiar with artificial intelligence and I uh, knew a guy and we were talking about the ability to recognize weapons. And I said, why couldn't you see a weapon in a parking lot of somebody approaching a church, a school, um, see that it's a weapon, lock the doors, call the police, and launch a drone. And um, I, I felt like, well, wouldn't it be cool for a drone or two or three to fly up to someone and, and be in their way, um, making them go, what the hell, a, a drone, where am I, I'm out of here. And hopefully stop the active shooting before it becomes active. Um, then we started going, well, what if it was armed? Well, then I started learning about the kinds of things that you could put on a drone and what, you know, the kinds of things that you couldn't. Um, started out with the idea of a taser, because taser is a local company and I, I knew the CEO. But Tony, our, one of our advisory board members back here, um, said, hey, it's not the right thing. So then I went to Pepperball. Yeah, that wasn't the right thing either. And then I met Todd from Defense Tech, who on his own, was working on taking uh, what Defense Tech made and putting it on a drone, and he went so far as patenting it. So what you'll see today is patented by him, and we have partnered with him uh, to create this product, mainly for the safety of officers and even for the safety of rioters. Um, I recently went on uh, Google and did an image search for people hit with a a canister, and I couldn't believe the number of pictures that were there. So this is a far safer way to use non-lethal weapons. So we're excited that you're here. Thank you very much for your time. With further ado, uh, you're going to take this back over. Yep. Thank you, Pat. Okay, we've got a few things to show you guys. Um, first, we're going to start off with Dustin Hawkinson. Um, he's a current um, officer of 14 years. He actually started the drone program um, at his agency uh, 14 years ago and launched that. Um, and also is uh, a chairman of ATOA. Uh, so he's really an expert in this space of setting up drone programs, best practices, etc. So Dustin's going to come up and uh, give a little advice and best practices on drone programs. Dustin? I'm behind you. There you go. The floor is yours. Thanks, Keller. Um, like you said, my name is Dustin. I know uh, a couple of people here. For those of you who don't know me, uh, a couple of corrections. I didn't start a drone program 14 years ago. I don't think there was a lot of drones back then. Um, I think it was the end of 2014, beginning of 2015, when we became interested, and I was initially tasked with 
uh, sort of a research project. Is this feasible? How can we do this? And it sort of morphed into what we have today, which is you know a fully operational drone program that's used in a lot of uh, mostly tactical situations, but other things as well, uh, from evidence collection to search and rescue, things like that. And uh, sort of the benefit of getting into the space so early was I gained a lot of experience pretty quickly, and I was invited by uh, an organization I belong to called NATIA, National Technical Investigator Association, to go and, and help other agencies around the country start their drone program, teach a class, get operator certified, uh, and things like that. So I've been, I've been doing it for a while, not quite 14 years, but uh, in my agency I'm a detective in a technical operations area, so it's one of, one of my uh, responsibilities. So when I first got involved with Defendry, I, I liked what they were showing me, what their concept was, what the idea was, and they asked me to be more involved and, and give advice and help maybe steer the product a little bit and, and make it something that we would want to use in my agency. And so I just, I figured I was talking to Pat this morning uh, and I was telling him a story and, and it kind of encompasses why I said yes to this and why I, I decided to help with this product. Um, he was saying, we were talking about riot situations and how there's usually a, a very small number of instigators and most of the people at the riot are you know, there to be angry and, and get their message across and, and march and, and take some sort of action, but they're not there for the violence. Uh, and so the, the sort of theory that we see in active shooter training that we've all done over the years and that shift that happened after Columbine of, uh, you know, it's the first sign of resistance that really stops someone. They take their own life or they surrender or, or whatever in active shooters. That's why we push the first guy there, girl there, the first couple officers, whoever it is, uh, if they're willing to push in, stop the threat, the first sign of resistance is what stops them. And, and I, think, I think this could be some more, uh, something similar to that in, in a more riot or civil unrest situation. The story I was telling him, which I'll try to keep sort of generic, I'm not here representing my agency, is at a civil disturbance event we had recently, um, I ended up sort of at the end of the night separated. I didn't realize that the people weren't with me when I saw a group of maybe 40 people coming out of a retail establishment, smashed glass all over the ground, t dragging all the stolen property out, and uh, thinking that the people up behind me weren't so tied up, I, I went after them. And so I'm running through this establishment after these people and there, there's, it ended up being just me. There's one guy, I, I, you know, I had a, some SWAT gear on, but I'm not the most intimidating person and there's 40 of them. And did they square up with me? No, they, their eyes got all wide, they panicked, and it looked like watching one of those nature documentaries where the, the gazelles see the lion coming and just the, that raw animal fear and they ran and it was me chasing like 40 people down escalators their stolen stuff is going everywhere they're slamming into walls um, falling over each other going the wrong way down escalators and it was me behind them chasing them but it was that that sign of a uh, first sign of resistance that they met where it suddenly wasn't easy um, free shopping in in a department store uh, now there's possible consequences and that that part of the brain sort of shifts and uh, and that's and that's the reaction. And uh, Pat said I should tell that story today. And that's that's kind of what it, where I see this when I first saw this product or idea um, at the time. Today, I guess it becomes a product. But I think you, with, with a couple of those handful of instigators out of the picture, um, the majority of the people at these civil unrest things, when they when they first get a wall of gas coming at them. Um, and they've got to start facing these consequences. I think that's going to be kind of a powerful tool here. Um, and so that's, if that makes sense, that's, that's why I decided to work with these guys and, and help them out and, and make it something that I, I would like to use in my job. So um, that's sort of the background. The, the topic they asked me to talk about today was just kind of um, some agencies have drone programs and some don't. Um, and in, in a product like this, you've got a. If you do have a drone program, you're looking at okay, what are the obstacles? Uh, and we've we've discussed those. There, you know, what sort of legal waivers do you need? Um, flight 
at night in controlled airspace over people, all that sort of thing. But when you really boil it down, we're going to do a demo here today and we don't need, um, the, the pilot's gonna be part 107 certified, which is a very basic part of, of any drone program. But really there's nothing else, at least to use the product with the gas in a general sense that, that you really need to, to do to get started. And so I think the barrier to entry is, is fairly low on something like this. Uh, and down the road, if, if you wanna get more advanced, you need to be in downtown Phoenix, like Phoenix and MCSO has been uh, with their civil unrest stuff. Maybe you need to get into controlled airspace or with the, the Mark 9 products, you wanna be maybe flying over people, something like that. But just to get started with this, I think it's gonna be a, a pretty easy thing to get into and a pretty powerful tool right off the bat. Um, and so if, if there's people here that don't have drone programs yet, I think that's, it's an intimidating sort of first step uh, to get into it, but it's not, it's not really hard. It's not like it was in 2014. The FAA has established a, a pretty straightforward program under 14 CFR Part 107 that, that outlines a simple process you can go through and how to be legal and fly a drone for commercial purposes, which is what we f fall under. Uh, and that's a much, much more simple process than, than flying under a COA. But I think training is important in that. You can uh, go through like Natia's training, like I mentioned, or hire a company or something. But there's those of us that have the experience that have done it for years now that can get you through the part 107 test or your operators rather show example policies from our agency from others who who have been involved and have taught these classes and have provided sample policies uh, there's going to be some policy decisions one kind of big one right off the bat is what do you do with video is there a retention policy you have are you going to keep it forever is it going to be evidence uh, that sort of thing are you going to hit the record button so there's some sort of, some of those policy sort of decisions you've got to work through. And then you have procedural issues, program issues to work through. Who's gonna be our drone operators? How many? Are they gonna be patrol? Are they gonna be detectives? Are they gonna be uh, like a street crimes type unit? Uh, how often are they gonna train? What's our maintenance gonna look like? All of that sort of thing sort of ties into policy, but that's all stuff that in at least the training that I do, we, we provide examples and, and best practices in and things like that. So the courses I've taught in the past, typically you get all of that done in a week. You go back to the agency, you hammer out some of these things. Um, some people like to just copy and paste a sample policy. They like tweak a couple things. And it's not really a huge, uh, you know, insurmountable thing that it looked like to me in 2014 anymore. Uh, so. That being said, between the how easy it is to get into a product like this and, and now with um, the sort of training that's out there, how easy it is to start a drone program, I think every, every law enforcement agency should be in this game. And I think this is just a good, another good example of a tool once you're in the game you can use. The, uh, it, it, was, it was just a giant game changer, especially in search warrants and tactical situations and things like that to have this camera in the sky now and some in little drones we've sent in where our robots can't get to, but mostly outside an eye in the sky where you can check roofs and you can see the big picture stuff. Uh, and at search warrants that we do, a lot of times we'll have two drones up now. We'll have one up high overwatch and one down low that can get in tighter, get some details, chase a runner, something like that. And it's just, we can't, we can't really imagine doing business the way we did before without the drones. It's, it's become such a integral thing. So uh, that being said, it's, that's why I'm here and that's sort of what I, why I think this product is going to be successful and why I'm happy to help out with it. If uh, anybody has questions, I'd be happy to talk about uh, my experiences, my agency's experiences uh, or anything else like that. They gave me 18 minutes to, to speak, and I'm not really a public speaker, so I didn't, I didn't quite fill it all. The, uh, I've been teaching classes forever, I was telling these guys earlier, and I can, I can teach off a curriculum and I can answer questions. Um, I'm not really a speech guy, so hopefully, hopefully that made sense to you. Does anyone have any questions I might be able to answer about training or operations or anything like that? Okay. No? Well, um, again, if you see me around after or want to exchange contact info or whatever, I'm happy to 
to talk to anybody from agencies and, and help out where I can. Uh, that's my full-time job, so thanks. Perfect. Thanks, Dustin. Appreciate it. And you've been training for, for 30 years? You've been... The number keeps going up every time we, we talk. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thanks, Dustin. And, and you know, he touched on training, right? So uh, training and certification is going to be a part of our service. Um, support, warranty, all of that we can get into, um, but that's that's definitely a key key component uh, from Defendery standpoint. So there's two two major components of the aerial platform: our remote drone piloting, so the software piece of it, and then what we'll show you out here with the mannequins um, in the actual hardware piece of it, right? The dispensing. Uh, so first, we're going to uh, walk through the software component, and the remote drone piloting. Mario, um, he's actually on our, our board of advisors. He's been a, a tech entrepreneur for. Uh, over 30 years, um, a drone pilot himself, um, and uh, he's really helped us in, in terms of uh, uh, the drone piece and the software, uh, bringing this together. And but we'll talk a little bit how the software um, um, and the dispensing come together. Uh, but Mario, I'll, I won't take any more of your time. The floor Thank is yours. You. Thank you, Skyler. Well, welcome everybody, and uh, I'm about to start. Uh, if you will glance over at the monitors, you'll see the software in action. Uh, so the Defendry uh, drone piloting or remote drone piloting software is a system that allows you to manage a fleet of drones, one drone or a fleet of drones. It allows you to do uh, mapping and uh, navigation of those drones from a remote location. It also allows you to dispense items. So, or, uh, For example, you can carry a, a spotlight on your drone you can uh, uh, have a speaker on your drone, as we'll demonstrate in a minute here. And then you can also dispense uh, the Defendry uh, uh, platform from the Defendry platform. So um, first of all, on the screen, we have uh, the ability to catalog and list your drones. Each drone has a flight log with it, so you can actually record and log uh, every flight. Um, and. Uh, each drone also has its own video feed, so one of the features of this product is the ability to uh, feed video into the system. Um, let me uh, go here. So here on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see two drones that we have set up. Uh, each drone will uh, give you uh, the distance to the drone. It'll give you a GPS coordinate, and it'll always give you uh, uh, a status report of what, what's going on with that drone. So it's speed, uh, distance uh, from the ground, altitude, and uh, distance from the home station. Um, second part that's really important is really our, our ability to create missions. So the drone can be flown by hand by a pilot using a remote control on location. Our system differentiates itself from any other system in that we can actually fly the drone uh, from multiple locations. So if, for example, you were in the middle of a riot and the police officer controlling the drone had to leave the area, another officer could pick up the control of that drone remotely, or somebody at headquarters could actually be observing, uh, uh, controlling that drone if need be, and also dispensing some of the, um, the payload. Um, on the uh, mission creation, uh, our system maps itself over Google Maps. So within uh, five feet distance, uh, we can actually locate a, uh, something on a map, and you can actually pinpoint it. So here, for example, I've got, I call it test one, but I can actually uh, add a mission. I can enter waypoints for this mission, I'll, so I'll call it test two. I can set the speed I want the, the drone to fly, I want it, the altitude that I want it to fly, and I can give it, uh, actually mark waypoints in different areas. So you'll see the, the waypoints will show up. And for example, if we're doing a riot or something, it's, let's say it's at a park, you could actually basically map the park out and, uh, and fly that route, aut completely autonomous of a pilot's control. One of the most important features that we have is the ability to stream video. And as, as you all know, as police officers, you, know, you, you need, you need uh, facts and you need video. Uh, so in any event, the system is able to take high-definition photos. 
It can stream video at 720p, so it's pretty, pretty high resolution, and send it all up into the cloud. Now, the neat thing about this is that you're able to share that video or that footage with anybody you want to. So if there's regulatory people, other police departments, you can actually simply send them a link on their phone and they can actually get a, a live feed of what's going on on the ground. So one of the things I wanted to show you, uh, let's see if this is, will work here. is how we can fly this drone completely on its own. And so let's see if this is going to work here. So basically, for each flight mode, it allows you to go through checklists. So I can fly this completely, even autonomously. It'll give you a checklist. So it'll ask for permissions. Make sure you have a good GPS lock. It'll check the battery status, that the latency, because this is now working on a cellular network, uh, that there is no latency, and it'll allow you to, if for example there's a connection is lost, the drone will automatically uh, land itself in a safe place. So once I do my checklist, I would just go next, and I would execute, and then all by itself the drone's going to start flying. And then I can actually program it to do a mission, or I can fly it through my computer. I, I can be, a, so we did a test last week. A friend of mine lives in Hawaii. We gave him the software. By the way, the software is all web-based, so you don't need any special computers. And he was able to fly the drone with no problem here in Scottsdale. It was pretty amazing. So again, I can go in here. I can take control of the drone. I can fly it. And here, we just happen to be close. We're being really careful today because of the wind. I can move it down downfield. It's fighting the wind, we're going right into the wind here. We can fly multiple drones and we can get multiple video feeds from the drones. So right now our video is not working, so you won't see it in video, but uh, you're able to see so we've got three drones up right now. And so the purpose of having multiple drones are obviously to observe. So you get every possible angle uh, and you can stream all of these video feeds back to uh, uh, headquarters or you can do it uh, uh, on location. Somebody in their police car could have a, uh, a internet connected or a Wi-Fi connected or, or cell connected system and actually get the same uh, feed. So uh, after the, uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer it, but this is just a brief overview of the software. Thank you. All right, thanks Mario. I think we're gonna go to Todd next. So Todd Kramer uh, is gonna show you, we're gonna start doing some live demos, gonna show you um, how to uh, load uh, the smokes on the units. And Todd's an expert in uh, less lethal. He's a director of operations at Defense Technology, who most of you guys know. Um, and he's helped us along the way uh, getting this launched. So Todd's been a, a huge help to us and obviously being an expert uh, in less lethal um, is very beneficial. So Todd, yep. I'll give you the floor. All right, hello. I like Scottsdale. It was minus 30 degrees with wind chill when I left Wyoming yesterday, so this is nice. Um, so I'm gonna walk through I just want to show and demonstrate how how easy the product is to apply to the drone because that's what when, when Defendery was developing this and going through everything we wanted to really you know cut down on how much time it takes to deploy it on a drone and also how easy it is to load and then on the other side how easy it is to reload um, we just want real quick loads and reloads when we're doing these operations so um, hopefully this comes up on the TV but I'm gonna start here and grab the drone real quick. So this is the M300 and it's fully mounted with two aerosol canisters. So 
uh, we targeted um, the products that law enforcement's already buying. So the main two products that we're set up to initiate and dispense are colored smoke irritants, smoke irritants, um, regular colored smoke, as well as Mark 9 um, high volume aerosols. So these are OC, OS Capscom, and just a, a, a small droplet that, you know, once it, once it's, once it hits its target, it's, um, you, you've got burning eyes and it's a lack of mirror, so you're, you're, you have a hard time breathing and you want to go get oxygen and get to where you can see. So mounting wise, um, the, the product's compatible with nearly all the drones out there that have T-legs. So they have the, the, the horizontal and the vertical mounting on the T-legs. And if you can, I'm just gonna hold this. So in order to mount, we've got these uh, three, they're, they're rubber, they're high-speed knuckle mounts that go onto the drone platform. So it's, it's really quick. You've got, you just put the, vertical one on and then there's two on the horizontal and then the straps come over themselves and latch in and then in a matter of 10 to 15 seconds you're mounted on that side so you, you end up with um, really one of these latches is enough to hold it in place but we went with a three mount just for extra safety because you don't want things falling out of the out of the sky but it's a um, it's, it's very secure and um, just really fast. So when you, when you go to mount and set up the drone, you wanna have it balanced so we have one for each side and we do the same thing. The difference between the two sides, this one is hard tethered to the operational side and this one here has the computers and the brain box on it. So this one's driving everything and talking to the remote and doing all the communications. So after about 30 seconds, um, you can take, uh, so when they get their Mark 9 aerosols, it comes with a handle. There's a couple screws in it you take out and the product comes with actuators that you just put on the collar of the Mark 9. So um, generally you probably have 15, maybe 20 of these ready to go depending on what kind of operation you're gonna do. And then after, after you've got your actuator on, it just sits into the crevice and then it, it locks in. This is a push pin lock. So you just push in the detent and there's a rubber ball that snaps in and keeps it in place. So you can put two on each side and it's really quick. And then um, to detach, you do the same thing. You just press the button and then it unlocks this and then they just fall out. So you can slap two more on and put the quick connect on and then you're locked in and ready to go. And then with the smoke irritants, they come with the M2A1 type military fuse. So to ready those, you just unscrew, unscrew the fuse. And then there's a, a reload. It comes in a 25, 25 count kit for reloads. And you just take out a reload and it just goes in place of the military type fuse. You just screw it in and then you are ready to go. And then same operation, you just put one or two on there, however many you want, and then you just plug into the bulkhead on the side here, and then you're ready to go and ready to fire. So that's all there is to it. Um, really quick, really quick to put on the drone, really quick to arm it with devices. And now you're pretty much ready to go. So um, the, main, the, the main computer, it's got a, um, one power, it's got one button on it, it's used for power and for checking your battery. So if you push it once, it tells you how much battery you have. And if you push it and hold it for four seconds, then it stays on and all the, all the LEDs stay on and you know it's ready to go. Um, then the other side is the remote. So the remotes are synced to each other. They only talk to each other. So if you have five of these, they're all paired. You can repair them. There's just uh, two buttons you have to push to repair one remote to another drone. So you can repair them and, and pair them however you'd like. But um, there's a, a, a frequency hopping in these. So they're, um, 
impossible to tap into. Um, protesters, rioters, they, these guys are actually pretty smart and they, they can, they do their homework and look at ways to, to, to tap into this stuff. But this specific technology has a frequency hopping and it sends a code before it sends a signal and after. And it takes those codes and it has to have those codes in front generated by this microprocessor for it to recognize it and initiate it and know, know that these are paired. Um, so after you turn the power on on the main unit, the remote's got a, a, a power on off button on the side and then it's got an arm and disarm so you can't you can hit all the buttons it won't do anything until you actually arm it and then once you arm the device it starts communicating and there's some blue LEDs that light up that show that it's communicating with the remote and then you've got four initiating buttons so you've got the main side and the secondary side so it's got main one main two secondary one and secondary two so whatever button you push lights off whatever's um, in in that electronic circuit um, it is a smart detect so it doesn't it doesn't care if it's a reload or if it's an actuator it's a, it knows so you can't you can't plug it into the wrong area it detects it once it's plugged in and it knows what it needs what signal it needs to send to either actuate or light off the squib um, I think with that I think we're ready to ready to demo so we're gonna start off uh, with some aerosols and initiate some aerosols and then we'll hook up some colored smoke and we'll go out there and do some stuff with the mannequin some colored smoke Do we have any volunteers for a live demonstration? <laughs> no? Okay. What's that? I think this is. I think this is. It was? So first, guys, uh, Todd's going to be showing uh, the aerosol first here on this mannequin right here, um, and then he'll switch these out, and then we'll go to smoke on these uh, back mannequins back here. Okay. Okay. We'll come back in close. Alright, I'm going to let some hair There you go, just down a little left. I'm just bursting right now, so keep it, yeah, that's good. Okay, now I'm going to empty. Oh, get down, yeah. All right, let's bring it down and do some up. Thank you. 
gas is already going. Get them over the mannequins. That box, that wind is lovely. Yeah, go. There you go. Back out, out, out. Okay, now go back. left over here. I just initiated the other one. And then zigzag kind of back towards the mannequins. Okay, come on. Right there. Let it finish dispensing. Yeah, that looks good. Should dispense out pretty quick here. Wouldn't put four on there. It's not going to stick around. So. So that was two canisters. Um, as you saw from Todd, it can hold up to four canisters. Um, and then we're working on a unit that just has two uh, for some smaller applications. Um, any, why Todd's gonna hook up and he's gonna do one more pass. Any questions, okay. comments, feedback, anything? No? Okay. And as soon as they stop, the wind stops, of course. Yeah, good point. So it was really hard to hear out there. So um, if you heard uh, the drone, it had a, a microphone on it with pre-recorded audio. Um, you could barely hear it. So it's, you know, drop what's in your hand. Drop what is in your hands and lay flat on the ground with your hands and feet separated. Surrender or you will be sprayed with a chemical agent. Police, don't move. You are under arrest. Gotta push the blue. Let's see. Elevation. There we go. Yeah. Todd, recommended elevation. What was a question? Uh, recommended elevation. Uh, no wind. You can get 30 to 40, and it'll come down. So. Yeah, um, depending on wind conditions, um, 15, 15 feet when you're windy, um, you can get up to 30, 40 feet pretty easy when there's no wind because it falls to the ground and then just kind of sets and carries with the breeze. right there and I'm gonna, st I'm gonna initiate a thing after a camera guy gets set. Drop what is in your hands and lay flat okay. on the ground with your hands and feet separated. Okay. Surrender. Or you will be sprayed with a chemical agent. Please don't move. You are under arrest. 
Okay, you can head off to the left a little. Or sorry, I'd go back. Oh yeah, there's a man. A little bit. you there. Go into the mannequin. There you go. That's good. And maybe go left. Or sorry, my left. Oh, you're good. And then this will be a good doing some area. Then come back to Maybe hit. This man will get here. Let's keep that slow. Yeah, I'll keep coming. Yeah. Yeah, may as well. Go ahead. We'll probably close to run now. Yeah, that was four. Yep, that was four. Yeah. Nah, we're good. We won't work. I'm gonna pull those off. So uh, get them off there. So that was actually all four canisters. That first that first run was individual canisters each at once, and then um, he let off all four if you really want to put some smoke out. Um, that was all four. Okay, we'll pull those off. Sweet. You good? Right, so, yeah. So, Any other questions? Waiver. So this is uh, a question about a waiver. Do you need to have a waiver to fly over groups of people? So the FAA is in the process of changing how, how that works. Currently, you can't fly over any non-participants in your flight, essentially. And, and so if you don't know that, that the flight is going on and you're, you're part of like a production crew like this or something, you can't fly over that person. So you wouldn't be able to fly over like a riot. Um, you can get a waiver for that, although it's it's not the easiest waiver to get. But we're sort of in a transition period because the FAA has just released new guidance uh, and uh, sort of rulemaking process on how they're changing a bunch of different things. And one of the things they're changing is flights over people. They're going with a more risk-based approach. So, for example, a small drone falling out of the sky on someone has a less risk of, of a larger drone. So that would be in a uh, lower category and would allow you to do more in regards to flight over people. So they still haven't released their final sort of rules on how that's going to come out, but that's that's sort of in flux because they realize it's a it's a difficult hurdle to overcome to to fly over people and get that waiver currently, and they're they're trying to improve it. Um, the the Mark Nine product, you've got to be a little bit closer to hit somebody with the with the chemical munition. The smoke. It's, it's unfortunate it's this windy today because normally when there's uh, no wind or less wind, you can sort of uh, fly a, a line and it creates a wall of smoke that drifts into the into your targets. Um, and it's just we're just bad luck that we're that's this windy today. But uh, so uh, hopefully my non-answer gives you a little bit of an idea. But it's it's hard right now and it's going to be getting easier when they when they kind of finish their their new rules on the subject. And I think some of the other new rules that they released are flying at night, right? Yep, flying at night is going to be uh, a lot easier without having to go through the waiver process. Uh, currently now, if you're a Part 107 pilot, if you're not a manned aviation pilot, you are just you just fly drones. You've got to go back to the testing center and take a proctored test for $150 every two years. That's essentially going away. You're going to be able to do an online thing like those of us uh, who have Part 61 licenses currently do. So there's uh, that there's a giant document they release and, and they're trying to address some of the pain points of the industry. But it sounds like FAA is going in the right directions in terms of these new rules and being able to get waivers. The FAA has it. never gone in the right direction, <laughs> um, but in this case, yeah, I think they're at least at least trying to do the right thing and, and make things easier for for the industry. Yeah. Any other questions? Nope. 
Anything else we missed? Oh, yep. Well, real quick, I wanted to add, so when you can put four canisters on here, so when you do end up with wind like this, you can fly to a corner and you can dispense a colored smoke or a non-irritant smoke and really watch where it carries and utilize that data to figure out where you want to dispense your chemical irritant. And then the, the, the main advantage for the aerosol is that you can burst it. So you can fly over a target. That second one was pointed in, a, in an odd direction, so that second one was kind of, kind of odd, but you can burst it. So you can do like three second bursts and you can go to different targets and do bursts versus the the chemical smoke that once you initiate it then you're kind of tied to it for for 30 seconds perfect well anything else guys no i just add one one thing the defendry's got some videos i think they're on the website now mm -hmm. uh that you can see the smoke being deployed in a less windy uh, situation and it's they're super impressive to watch and you can kind of see we don't normally have wind this high so in a, in a more typical situation what that would look like I'd encourage right. you guys to look at that right absolutely well ladies and gentlemen thank you again for coming out truly appreciate it um, any other questions we're gonna be hanging around here uh, happy to happy to help so thanks again for coming appreciate it